Hi, I'm Stan Foxworthy with Foxworthy Studios. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a behind the scenes and some final images of a project we're going to be working on over the next year uh, for the Philip Simmons Foundation. Uh, Philip Simmons was a master blacksmith who has created stuff all around Charleston to Charleston International Airport all the way to the White House uh, and amazing beautiful iron art gates, etc. So we were out at their foundry right behind their museum and we went ahead and were photographing stills for the coffee table book and I had my friend Larry Monteith shooting behind the scenes video while Allison and I were in there working. So one of the things that I keep getting asked by people is because I shoot a lot of commercial work is why I've chosen to stick with Olympus and Micro Four Thirds. Why not use medium format? Why am I not shooting full frame? And I have to say unequivocally that we found that this works the best for us. The images are gorgeous. The sensor is beautiful. I never have to worry about dust spots. I don't have to worry about moisture. The Emsuiko glass is the sharpest I've ever used. It's phenomenal and it's sharp edge to edge. So it's not just sharp in the center, it's sharp all the way to the edges. It does everything we need it to do. I'll give you an idea too. Shooting with the EM1X, it gives me about six and a half stops image stabilization. For the shoot, because we were shooting in a foundry, it was already about 100 degrees here in Charleston, and inside his little foundry, it was well over 130 degrees. So it was hot, it was sooty, and I didn't want to be stopping just to figure out what lens to change to next. So I decided to go ahead and run the little 12 to 40 2.8 Emsuiko Pro. I find this fabulous. It gives me the angle of view of what on a full frame would be a 24 to 80. Uh, it's absolutely stunning. Works well at all focal lengths. And it allowed us to use one camera, one lens for the entire photo shoot. One of the things you'll also see, or may not even notice, is for a long time we've been a pro photo user professionally. We use Profoto lighting. Well, over the past couple months, we've been doing some testing and we are actually in the process of changing out everything to all Flashpoint Godox lighting. What you've seen or what you will be seeing here in a little bit are some of the images that we shot. We're using the Flashpoint Explorer 400 Pro along with their lithium ion zoom uh, speed lights for a little bit of accent lights with gels and stuff, which are absolutely phenomenal. They work great. We've got their Pro triggers and everything works seamlessly. We can't tell a difference between shooting Profoto or the Flashpoint Godox. And one of the reasons too why we're sticking with Flashpoint, Godox makes some beautiful gear and Flashpoint is a rebranded Godox, uh, is because of the uh, customer service we get out of, uh, out of Adorama on their Flashpoint stuff. So anyway, so you're gonna see a, a little bit of behind the scenes. My friend Larry Monteith came out and shot that for us and you'll see some of Allison and I working in there, and then we'll have some of the images from this first shoot towards the coffee table book. So I look forward to seeing your comments and your thoughts on what we've done. If you've got any questions on Olympus Micro Four Thirds or the lighting, please put them in the uh, comments down below and I'll try to answer each and every one of them. Again, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest. Bye-bye now. Well, and today, as you can tell, we're photographing Carlton Simmons. He's master blacksmith and nephew of Philip Simmons. So Carlton's the last one in line for doing this kind of art with iron here in the family. Carlton's in his 60s and just going at it like he's a young man. It's just fantastic to watch him work. Uh, a lot of people come to Charleston because of the beauty of Charleston, and a lot of that comes from the ironwork that's around here at the churches, at the waterfront park and everything else that the Simmons family has created over the many, many decades. Uh, as you can tell, I mean, it's just, it's just a beautiful craft and art that he does. So when we're doing this, we, we like to be control of our light. We're being proactive. This is one of the things that I teach in my lighting workshops as far as how to be proactive and control your light. As you can see from the video, you're going to see how the difference between what I'm creating with flash versus what's going on in the video. We're having fun. A little more. We're having fun. 
and you can see we've kind of got our own smoke machine going on here from the forge that thing is running he's he's just cranking away here but what we're able to do is be a lot more in control of our light notice how just from the video it just kind of looks flat and it's all dusty and hazy and smoky in here well the beautiful thing about working with off-camera flash is you can create the look and the feel you want and one of the things i'm doing with my lighting is i'm keeping it looking more natural in the direction that it's coming from versus somebody take a look at it and go oh yeah this has been lit by a flash or something so i've got our our main light coming in from camera right uh, it's a strip box on a 400 watt head but that kind of is the same direction that the light would normally be coming from and then i'm using another flash to fill in carlton and him working uh, with a, a westcott beauty dish and a grid but this kind of gives me a, a, a really nice combination. So I've got a beautiful edge light going on on him and I'm capturing the whole place. One of the things you'll notice too is our shadows have a little bit of a blue tint to them. We're using a, a double cut of a blue uh, CTB on one of the speed lights and a single on the other. And that gives us our, uh, our shadows. Yeah, with Allison having that flash on the pole, the, the heat from that, that iron furnace there was so much, it melted the gaff tape, it melted the gel. I mean, it was just something else. The beautiful thing is, is the speed light never, never stopped. It worked out beautiful. So. Yeah, even getting in close and tight with him, I wanted to show the look of the veins and the power in his arms. And by having lighting coming in from both directions and controlling it, I'm able to show the highlights and the shadows and the ridges and the valleys of the power in his arms. Just, just amazing. In our next video too, we'll go ahead and we'll do a little bit of a walkabout around Charleston at some of the locations that we've got to capture and record for the Philip Simmons Foundation, showing some of this beautiful artwork and iron that they've done over the many decades here. This will kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So this, if this makes sense to you, having that strip light on the camera right, what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a, a beam of light on him, but I'm trying not to light the rest of the room with that. I just want to get a nice edge light on him. And then of course you can see the beauty dish on camera left that's creating that, that shaft of light coming in. If I didn't have that grid on there, that anvil being closer to us would be just fluorescing. But I want to make sure that I lit him and not so much the floor or the ceiling. Now for more information, check out the Philip Simmons Foundation at www.philipsimmons.us. And thanks for watching.